good everybody welcome back to another my name toys video today we are back with another ranking style video as you guys know we did just cover all of elite series 94 now you're probably wondering you did not cover stephanie and mace i can touch on them quickly here today but i'm not going to cover them in full depth in a review i honestly ran out of time to do the review so i figured i'd move straight to the ranking i do apologize for that if you guys want to see a full in-depth review of those one day let me know maybe that's something that we can work out for patreon members or something down the road still don't have a patreon if you guys want to see a patreon page let me know but i'd like to incorporate like fed style stuff in there extra content related to the channel just a lot of things that i, I have to get figured out but today man we're gonna run through it this is similar to a my damn thoughts episode i guess that's technically what this is here but i don't know how to gauge your interest in the my damn thoughts episode however let's go ahead and dive into it man if you guys want to know how our ranking style videos work we're gonna rank the full set but we also have other things to cover we're not just gonna rank the set we're gonna take you through some different elements of the set and give you categories and things like that so we start things off with my first thoughts on this set I thought that this set was eh when we first saw it. I loved MSK, even though I hated the torso on Wes Lee. I love the Edge figure. I love the Bret Hart. Wasn't a big Retribution guy, and then I think the Stephanie is needed, but I think the better way to release her would have been a two-pack with Triple H. I think that's where my thoughts are on her. Anyways, guys, let's dive into who I think the shelf warmer in the set's gonna be. I think it's gonna be Stephanie McMahon. I don't know about you guys, but in my area, the women's figures are the shelf warmers, right? The Nia Jacks of the world, your Chinas, your basics of the women, they always shelf warm. And look at my shoulder right here. This is why this figure pissed me off. The shoulder is completely broken. You guys will notice on this arm, it goes all the way up with no problem. I guess some factory glue or something. Like, see how easy this one is? It got stuck there for a second. But this one right here, man, it, it, it moves the whole arm. It is not, or the whole torso. It is not moving. I tried playing around with it, and I've pretty much just broken the figure. So, I don't know what to do about that. I, I don't know what I'll do, but her arm is, like, stuck out to the side. So, she's going to be the shelf warmer in the set. I have no doubts about that when this set hits retail. But, I think the hottest figure in the sh in the set is going to be Bret Hart. I think this is a really standalone great Bret Hart. It also comes with the Black Intercontinental Championship. And I think since this comes with the Black Intercontinental Championship, I mean, there's there's, there's no doubt. People are going to buy the hell out of this Bret Hart. And I think this is also, if I, I guess we can knock out two birds with one stone here. This is the best accessory in the set. I felt like the accessories in this set, we also got a Women's Championship with Stephanie McMahon. But uh, it came down to these two, but I felt like these were in such low quantities across our collection. I think the Black IC title was the best accessory, but I think Bret Hart will fly off shelves. I think he could also give it to Edge. I think this Edge figure is highly sought after because of the white gear. It's a good-looking Edge figure. His figures are always pretty sought after, but I think Bret Hart takes the cake. I think uh, for the majority of collectors on the on the shelves there, they're going to want this Bret Hart. I think he'll sell very quickly. It's a really good Bret Hart, and uh, he, he's amazing. I, th I like this Bret Hart a whole lot, so Bret Hart will definitely be the hot guy out of the set. Speaking of which, Bret Hart's actually the chase figure, so if you guys did not know, you have this one which is a bla black on pink singlet and then the chase is the pink on black and I plan on buying two of the chases and an extra one of these that way I can have one standard elite 94 one chase standard elite 94 then I can torso swap the chase onto the regular to get a pink on pink singlet and then I can torso swap the black onto the black and have a black on black singlet so that's what I'm planning to do we may do that on surgery let me know if you guys want to see that but I will have to wait until the figures come in until that point we will have to uh, put that on hold but but I have some other things we could probably do on surgery that I'm thinking about doing. We'll have to see. You know, we'll have to play around with it. However, there is Bret Hart. He's looking good. He's a, he's a fantastic piece. Getting into the head sculpts. Who I think has the best head sculpt? I think this really came down to Wesley, Nash Carter, and Edge. And I think Edge took the cake. I really like this head. I think it gives you that pissed off Edge. It really gives you that, you know, just, just like grimacing, you know, hurt, pissed off. You can work with this Edge. I, I like it a lot. It can work as a heel. It can work as a determined baby face. I like this Edge head sculpt. Uh, uh, maybe one of his best heads. Maybe not the best one, but it's up there. I like the edge. And the worst is going to go to Mace back here. And I got to tell you about this Mace figure, guys. This Mace figure is pretty abysmal. And as the review or the, the video goes on, you're going to learn why. But this head sculpt looks bad. Like, look at this. He looks like a caveman or something. Like, what is what is that face? What is that face? He looks like he's like, huh? What's up? Huh? That's what he just looks. He looks terrible. Okay. And this kind of just sums up retribution with that face right there. I mean, that's all I can really say about it. This figure is not good. I don't like it. I do not like it. I think aesthetically he looks great. Everything else. I, I can't stand him. I really cannot. Getting into the best articulation. It's going to go to Nash Carter. You know, he is on. Oh, I thought he was on ball joints. He is not on ball joints. Okay. So honestly, the articulation could go to a few guys. I think that Wesley has a lot of great articulation as well. He's actually on ball joints, but I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know if his articulation is as good as Nash Carter and Bret Hart, but I would say that it's either Wesley, Nash Carter, or Bret Hart. I think I'd go Bret Hart, though. I was gonna go Nash Carter, but I think it's Bret Hart now. Yeah, I think I think Bret Hart feels the best in hand, and he stand. Yeah, I, I like the Bret Hart. I think Bret Hart is just the MVP right now. He is killing it. But Nash Carter can move around, too. You know, I like the Nash Carter figure, and it's slightly smaller in stature, so you may have a better time with that one, but I, uh, it's really a toss-up. I'm gonna give it to Bret Hart, though. And then the worst articulation is going to go to who? Who'd have thunk, Brad? Who would have thunk? Listen to this. Oh, now you don't want to do it? It used to tick when you kicked it forward, but now it only kicks when you really... It only clicks when you go backwards. But when I first got this out of the package, when I would kick this forward, it would go kick, kick like, you know, that little Nick sound. It's because it's a Rock formula. I'm pretty sure they used just a Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like, from the knees up, and then they switched his lower legs. These actually may be, this may be a Rock figure, just completely repainted. I'm not even gonna lie to you, because I think this is the legs that his, his I think this is the legs that Rock uses, because he has the short boots, and then he has that thing that goes around the calf for his boots, so. Again, man, just let you everything you need to know. This figure is just not my favorite, bro. It doesn't move around nice, like, Rock figure. Like, I, like, good God, dude. Leg is so stiff, and I just hate retribution, and this figure kind of just embodies that. Again, it looks aesthetically pleasing. Like, I love all the different things he's got going on as far as being, like, toyetic, and I love the little things on his boots, but Jesus, I just want to throw that figure across a yard. Now, getting in a number of figures for each guy, you guys know that Nash Carter, Wesley, and Mace, this is all their first time in the line. This is all first time in the line, so all three of these guys are, this is their only figure, so if you want elites of these guys, this is your best bet, because it's the only bet you can make. You got those three guys right there. They only have one figure. Now, as far as Stephanie McMahon goes, she actually has three Elites, believe it or not. She has the Elite 94, which I'm holding. Then she also has the Elite 37 and the Elite 50. I think that's the two figures right there. All three different eras and timings, even though some of them kind of aesthetically look the same. You know, there, there's quite a few Stephanie's out there. She does have a lot of basics and battle packs and stuff like that, but as far as Elites, that's your only ones. And then diving, good God, speaking of diving, just diving headfirst into the concrete is Stephanie McMahon. And then getting into Edge and Bret Hart, who definitely have the most figures in the set, you do have Bret Hart right here, which is the Elite 94. We did, of course, talk about the Elite 94 Chase figure. You have the Elite 43 Bret Hart, the Survivor Series Elite, the Defining Moments, the Ringside Exclusive, all pink one that's beautiful, the Ringside Exclusive King of the Ring Bret, the two-pack WCW Bret with Goldberg. You have the Ultimate Edition. You have the Best of Pay-Per-View Elite, Old Man Bret Hart. Then you have the re-release WrestleMania 38 version of that, and then you have the WrestleMania 30 Bret Hart in the same wave as HBK, if you guys remember that one. So, a few Bret Hart's out there. You know, there's not as many as you'd think. You'd think there'd be way more. There's definitely a selection, but there's not as many as you'd really think. This is, I don't know if, uh, I mean, I know you have the all pink one, which is beautiful. The Defining Moments is beautiful as well. But as far as double jointed arms and, like, stuff like that, like, this is definitely your best affordable option for Bret Hart right now, I'd say. This, this is a great figure. And then, last but not least, we do have Edge, who's been around a while, so you guys know. You do have the Elite 94, which I'm holding. You have the Elite 83, the Elite 83 Chase in the black. You have the Ringside Exclusive Rated R Championship Edge, which is one of my favorite elites ever. You do have the Ringside Exclusive Edge Heads 3-in-1 figure with Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. You have the Legends figure, the Legends Chase in the red. You have the Hall of Fame Elite, which I love too. That figure's beautiful. You have the Elite 1 the Elite 8, the Elite 13. You have the WrestleMania Elite, which is abysmal. And then you have the SummerSlam Elite Edge. I think that's all the Elite Edges. There might be one or two more out there. I try all these sound right in my head, but you never know until you really, you know, grasp them. But Edge has got a lot of great figures, but I'm, I'm loving to see these continue, man. To get these modern day updated edges, I do have to buy. Today, I'm probably just gonna go on eBay and purchase all the different parts that I need and just do it all in one bulk order. Spend like 200 bucks on all the stuff and then get them in for surgery next week sometime. We can get all those surgery parts in there and get all those taken care of because we got a lot of stuff to do, man. We got a lot of stuff to do, but now it is time to rank the set from worst to best before we get out of here. And of course, we do also have to get our random shout out in. So, with all that being said, man, here is let me let me just take everybody off screen and then we're gonna rank this set from worst to best. So, clearing out here. So, starting out with number six, man, it's gonna be Stephanie. You may be shocked to think that it's Stephanie. You may have thought it'd be Mace, but Stephanie's arm right here really did me in. You know, uh, I think aesthetically, I think. I think as a standalone figure, she's not like terrible. Like she moves around well, but at the same time, man, it's just kind of a plain Jane figure and I would have liked to seen her in a two pack of some sort. So I'm going to put Stephanie at the number six spot. Coming in at number five, you guessed it. It's Mace. Okay. It's Mace. The head sculpt's weird. You know, I hated Retribution. Wasn't excited to get the figure. He's stiff as a damn board. Oh God. Just get out of my face before I lose my mind again. We're coming in at number five right there. 
Coming in at number four, this one was actually really tough for me, but at the end of the day, I did go with Wesley. I wanted to put Wesley at the number three spot, but I couldn't, man. I could not. I, I figured it out that I think I like the Nash Carter figure a little bit more. I think the Wesley is a bit stiff, and he uses this terrible torso. It's a great head sculpt. I love the shorts mold. He's got Johnny Gargano syndrome. His legs are a bit stiff, so I went with... I wanted to put Wesley above him. I really did, but, you know, those different circumstances changes things for me, and I think the Nash Carter feels a little bit better in hand, can move around a little bit better, so I put Nash Carter at three, Wesley at number four, and coming down into my top two, this one was actually really tough as well. Oh, God, it was tough, but at the end of the day, I went Bret Hart number two and Edge number one. You know, at the end of the day, if you guys did not know the criteria for the ranking, it comes down to posability, how it feels in the hand, how excited I was for the figure. Does the figure look like the person relative to real life? Parts, choices, accessories. Again, how excited am I for the figure? If I saw it at retail, would I grab an extra one? You know, there's lots of different things like that. I can say that for, for sure. I would definitely grab both of these if I saw these at retail. These are, you know, this is probably my favorite edge gear of all time, or it's definitely up there. And for them to make that in figure form, it's got double jointed arms. It does have a rubber coat, but I love the head sculpt. I am going to fix him up. And once he's fixed up, I know I shouldn't have to fix him up, but once I fix him up, he's going to be even better than he is right now. So I went with Bret Hart at number two and Edge at number one. He's also one of my favorites of all time. So, you know, you got to you gotta include it in there. But there is my ranking, I think. But if you guys put Bret Hart at number one, wouldn't doubt you for a moment. You know, I really wouldn't. I think that it's a fantastic figure as well. And I underrated the head sculpt. I thought it was going to be trash and it turned out to be really good. I actually love that Bret Hart. It is going to be one of my favorite figures of the year, probably when it's all said and done. So we'll have to see about that. But that wraps up my ranking of WWE Elite Series 94, man. All the different info. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But before we get out of here, we do have to get into our random shout out. And this shout out is actually going to go to S. Barnett, who says, are you sure Nash Carter is on ball joints? Because in 843, if you look closely on the leg, hip part, you can see a line there. And that leg mold with that line are used on figures with the ratchet pine cone joint legs. And he is correct. I thought for sure that he was on ball joints. I thought it was the, uh, thought they were different legs choices than I was thinking. And they weren't. So correct, sir. It looks like they just use a straight up Daniel Bryan. I did not think they would just use a straight up Daniel Bryan. I thought they would have gave him ball joints, but they did not. So good catch there at S. Barnett. Good vision right there. He is not on ball joints. I thought for sure that he was, and I was wrong. However, man, that is going to wrap up this video. Huge shout out to S. Barnett and everybody that checked out the video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you want a future shout out in a future video, leave me a comment down below. Like the video, subscribe, be active on the channel. You can earn yourselves a shout out in the next video. But thank you guys. Have a blessed day. I'll see you guys next time, and things are coming. You crossed the line. I've been